Carbon markets are becoming increasingly more relevant with the national and international debates on how best to address and counter climate change. But what is a carbon market? First, let's understand what a carbon credit is. A carbon credit represents one metric ton of carbon dioxide, or its equivalent, that was avoided or removed from the atmosphere. There are two types of carbon credits, reduction credits and removal credits. Reduction credits are earned by projects that reduce the amount of greenhouse gases emitted compared to previous levels. Examples include improved forest management, which keeps forests healthy to absorb more CO2, or technology-based reduction projects such as clean cooking or renewable energy projects like wind or solar farms that replace fossil fuel power. Removal credits are earned by projects that take carbon dioxide out of the atmosphere and lock it away for decades, centuries, or even millennia. Examples include planting trees, afforestation, reforestation, or revegetation, which absorb CO2 as they grow, or using advanced technology like direct air capture, which sucks CO2 directly from the air and stores it underground. Now, let's see how these carbon credits are traded. The journey of a carbon credit starts with a project that reduces or removes greenhouse gases from the atmosphere. These credits are first sold in the primary markets to governments, companies, and individuals who want to offset carbon emissions. But the journey doesn't stop there. These carbon credits can then be traded multiple times on secondary markets. Here, intermediaries facilitate transactions between buyers and sellers, ensuring that the credit finds their way to where they are needed most. Finally, a carbon credit is retired when a buyer uses it to officially offset its emission and meet its climate goals. Carbon credits can be sold within two types of carbon markets, voluntary carbon markets and compliance carbon markets. Voluntary carbon markets allow carbon emitters to purchase carbon credits voluntarily. This means companies, governments, and individuals can buy credits to offset their own emissions or to contribute to global climate goals. Compliance carbon markets, on the other hand, are regulated by law. They impose legally binding emission reduction targets on companies. These companies must either reduce their emissions or monetarily compensate for their emissions. Compliance carbon markets operate in one of two ways. First, there is the cap and trade system. In this system, a limit or a cap is placed on the total emissions allowed to be emitted within a jurisdiction over a certain period. Allowances are then distributed to companies. Companies that emit less than their allowances can sell their extra allowances to companies that exceed their limits. This creates a financial incentive for companies to reduce their emissions. Second, there is the baseline and credit system. Here, each company has a specific emissions reduction target. Companies that reduce their emissions faster than the target can earn credits. These credits can then be sold to companies that are struggling to meet their reduction obligations. The purchasing of carbon credits on a global level is highly influenced by international agreements. One of the most influential agreement is the Paris Agreement, which was reinforced following the United Nations Framework Convention on Climate Change, COP26. Under Article 4 of the Paris Agreement, each signatory country must prepare a nationally determined contribution. This is a country's specific commitment to reduce national greenhouse gas emission, showing how each country aims to do its part in combating climate change and achieving net zero by mid-century. For countries that struggle to avoid emissions, Article 6 of the Paris Agreement provides a solution. It establishes a mechanism for trading emissions reduction or removals between countries. Once traded, these are known as internationally traded mitigation outcomes. This system allows countries to meet their emission target by purchasing credits from others that have successfully reduced their emissions. Similarly, the European Union is taking action through mechanisms such as the Carbon Border Adjustment Mechanism, or CBAM. This encourages EU member states and companies to reduce greenhouse emissions and ensure carbon is priced fairly. Ultimately, CBAM aims to prevent carbon leakage where companies might move production to countries with less strict emission regulations. This international structure set the rules within which global markets must operate, blustering demand for carbon credits and helping achieve global climate goals.
Carbon markets offer a range of core benefits beyond just reducing greenhouse gas emissions. The revenue generated by selling carbon credits expands the funding available for climate projects, which were previously reliant on public and philanthropic funding. This aligns with Sustainable Development Goal 13, which focuses on climate action. The environmental benefits of carbon markets include more sustainable land management, protection of biodiversity, and improved air quality, all made possible through additional carbon finance. Carbon markets also bring significant societal benefits. They help create more jobs, provide access to clean water supplies, and improve electricity access, all of which boost the well-being and health of communities. Additionally, carbon markets enhance food security by incentivizing farmers to adopt sustainable agriculture practices. These practices improve soil quality and support long-term cultivation. Overall, Carbon markets not only help fight climate change, but also promote environmental sustainability, improve community well-being, and secure a healthier, more prosperous future for all. That is why the African Carbon Market Initiative and its partners aim to scale high-integrity carbon markets. Our long-term ambition is to grow Africa's carbon market to more than 1.5 gigaton of carbon dioxide retired by 2050. We emphasize the equitable and transparent distribution of carbon credit revenue, ensuring a fair share of the revenues goes to local communities. Our overall aim is to drive climate action and to deliver these economic, welfare and biodiversity benefits to African communities. By scaling the carbon market, we hope to create sustainable growth that supports the people of Africa and our planet.